Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Jessel Noor in Baltimore. Hundreds of students at Washington University in St. Louis have entered the second week of an occupation of a school administration building protesting the school's ties with Peabody Energy. It's the, one of the world's largest private coal mining companies. Its chairman and chief executive officer, Gregory Boyce, is on the school's board of trustees. Now joining us to discuss this are two guests. We're joined by one of the occupiers, Carolina Burn <coughs> Caroline Burney. She's a senior at Washington University and studying environmental policy. She's been active in the fossil free divestment campaign and currently one of the student organizers on the ground that's sitting in to, to protest Peabody. We're also joined by Jeff Biggers. He's an American book award winning journalist and historian, author of several books, including Reckoning at Eagle Creek, The Secret Legacy of Coal in the Heartland. He's the grandson of a union coal miner in Southern Illinois, which is affected by Peabody Energy, longtime chronicler of the coal industry. His recent piece is Why the Great Wash You Sit In Against Peabody Coal Matters. Thank you both for joining us. So Caroline, um, I understand that over this past uh, week and almost a half now, you've gotten a lot of attention from the media, from administration, from other students, and they've asked you essentially why you're doing this and why you think this sit-in is an effective strategy. Yeah, so for many years now, WashU has had a relationship with Peabody Energy. Um, since Greg Boyce, Peabody CEO, was placed on the Board of Trustees in 2009. Um, and since 2009, students have been actively organizing against Peabody on campus. Um, we've sort of gone through all of the traditional means of campus organizing, collecting signatures for petitions, passing student resolutions, meeting with the chancellor, and yet nothing has changed. And as climate change escalates and as it becomes a major issue for young people in my generation, we've realized we really can't wait and that we need to escalate our tactics and show the administration that students really care about this issue and that we're angry that the university has such close ties to this corporation that not only propagates climate change, but destroys the communities in which they mine. And Jeff, um, you've written about the history of the coal industry um, and protest against it. Talk about why you say this protest matters and why it's historic. You know, I, I really consider it a watershed event uh, for three reasons. I think the first and foremost is that it's a sustained sit-in. It's day after day after day, and it's growing. It really taps into this groundswell that I feel is growing across the country that says we can't just do one day protests and have photo ops. We have to do sustained sit-ins that really matter, that's really gonna gain people's attention. And that literally says, we're not going away until we have action. Uh, the second reason that it makes it a watershed event is that Wash U is really in ground zero of climate change denial. This is really the belly of the beast. St. Louis is the city of some of the largest coal companies in the world, not just Peabody, but Arch Coal, and Patriot and Foresight and of course Monsanto. Uh, the third reason is these students are teaching an amazing lesson to the rest of the nation. The IPC, uh, IPCC climate change report came out last week of course and said we need immediate action. And yet there has always been this gap between science and action. We know climate change is a fact and yet we're not doing anything. And these students are it's literally holding up this great question to the rest of the nation saying, we have to close the gap, we have to have immediate action, we have to stop this kind of acceleration of coal mining that is not only destroying our, our countries and, and so much of our nation and globally, but also our atmosphere. And they're basically saying uh, the big question, which side are you on? And Caroline, I wanted to uh, turn back to you Talk more about Peabody's relationship um, with your school. I understand they fund the they fund research at the college's consortium for clean coal utilization. Um, is that an issue for you as well? Yeah. So Peabody's relationship with WashU is relatively recent. Um, Greg Boyce was placed on the board of trustees in 2009, um, and shortly before that, Peabody, Arch Coal, and Ameren, the local utility here in St. Louis. Um, donated $5 million to fund the clean coal or consortium for clean coal utilization. And so these were one of the original issues that students have been organizing, saying, as a university that prides itself on its commitment to global health and 
the environment, how can we propagate the myth that coal can ever be clean? Um, so students have been resisting the idea um, of the consortium and pushing for the name to be changed. So that's sort of one of the major issues that we organize around. Um, and, and all of our asks are um, trying to push the administration to change the name of this consortium and move away from the idea that coal can be clean and move away from the idea that the university is supporting or is supporting the industry and using industry terms um, when we know that coal does obviously terrible things to the environment, but also um, the effects that Peabody is having on communities um, are really are things that we're really worried about. And Jeff, talk more about this company, Peabody Energy. Um, you noted in your recent piece that Rolling Stone wrote, he, uh, the CEO, Greg Boyce, might be one of the biggest obstacles to meaningful climate change in the world. Um, they recently launched this multi-million dollar campaign to build awareness and, and support to end, quote, world's number one human environmental crisis of global energy poverty, promoting coal as a clean, as a clean resource. Um, and they've also um, had vast extraction projects in southern Illinois, which you've documented and where you have family. Right. I, I, I think there are a few other countries in the world that have such a legacy of ruin as Peabody Energy. And my family understands this first and foremost. Mr. Peabody himself, Francis Peabody, sank his first coal mine in our area, southern Illinois, in 1895. And since then, he has taken the uh, same sense of exploitation and plunder uh, around the United States and around the world. Uh, this legacy of ruin really touches on five major areas. Uh, the labor movement just last year, of course, the WashU students came together in solidarity with retired coal miners who had lost their health, health uh, benefits in a, a bankruptcy scheme that uh, Peabody was a part of. And once again, it reminded us that still today, three coal miners die daily from black lung disease, a disease that affected my own grandfather that we have a complete denial about. Uh, the second area is a level of human rights. Uh, last year, WashU once again came to the forefront in solidarity of protest with people from the Navajo Nation who came from Black Mesa to talk about the very bitter legacy of destruction on Black Mesa when thousands of people, close to 14,000 people, were relocated uh, over many decades uh, due to the massive strip mines in Arizona. Uh, the third area, of course, is the environment that Peabody has been so destructive. Even today in my southern Illinois, in my own Eagle Creek area, in an area that has been completely destroyed by strip mining and is depopulated, there are and still today uh, environmental uh, um, discharges and violations and abandoned mines and whatnot that we're still having to deal with Peabody, who left this really disastrous environmental ruin. And of course, the new issue is their expanding strip mine uh, in Rocky Branch in Southern Illinois, which really is one of the great uh, examples of out and out destruction. Here's a small little farming community that is overwhelmingly against an expanding strip mine. And now Peabody has uh, worked to, to not only change their roads and destroy their forest, but ultimately to be doing blasting and mining within a few hundred feet of these people's homes that ultimately will force them to go away and have left them in a, in a really uh, disastrous situation. Uh, the fifth area I think we have to really talk about is Peabody's global impact. And I think as you suggest, now they're trying to have this uh, outrageous scam that somehow they're working on energy poverty. But the truth is they're leading the plunder of massive coal mining operations in Indonesia at the very time that we desperately need the carbon sink in great tropical forests. They're leading massive uh, mining operations in Mongolia. They're doing massive mining operations in Australia where even Peabody workers are going on strike due to working conditions. And they're really leading the charge of climate denial that is setting back our nation by decade. And I think that is again why this protest is so important, not just for uh, St. Louis, not just for uh, Southern Illinois, but for the nation and, and the planet itself. And Caroline, I wanted to end with you. Um, you've been there for almost um, one and a half weeks now. How long do you plan on staying there? I know you recently met with your school's chancellor. Um, tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about what he said. And finally, um, I want to get you to respond to what, uh, to what Peabody Energy says, that in fact, 
through clean coal, as they call it, they can help end poverty and help um, stop further environmental catastrophe. Yeah, so we are in a sustained sit-in, so we are going to stay in until our t we feel that our chancellor has heard us and is willing to negotiate. Um, that being said, when we met with him on Saturday, um, we saw that he still fundamentally disagrees with us, and he continues to use these industry terms to talk about coal and talk about the way that coal will be used for years to come. He maintains his commitment that the university should be doing clean coal research um, and is, does not appear to be um, weakening his ties to Peabody and Greg Boyce, um, at least when we talked to him on Saturday. Um, but that being said, we've talked to many other administrators since that time, and we feel that our voice and our message is getting across on campus and that we need to keep pushing and we need to find new allies in this fight, not only on campus, but on a national level. Um, and so we think that this fight here at WashU is really symbolic because, yeah, we're in the belly of the beast of the coal industry. We have Peabody and Arch headquartered here and that students here are pushing against this. A school that has is represented by CEOs from Peabody and Arch and Monsanto and that if we're escalating and if we can win, that this is a huge win for divestment campaigns and climate campaigns all across the country. And Caroline, um, you know, Peabody Energy, they just launched this multi-million dollar campaign yeah. saying that their technology is clean and it can help end poverty and will help reduce in the environmental impact because it's so clean, especially in poor communities around the world. Um, last, right. last point, uh, please, please respond to that. Yeah, um, we've seen Peabody's ad campaign uh, sponsored, bottom lined by the PR firm that has also supported Big Tobacco and saying that cancer or that cigarettes don't cause cancer. And so while I think that their campaign is ridiculous, we are also trying to focus our efforts on sort of just standing in solidarity with these communities and just breaking through these lies that the coal industry is propagating and breaking through this, this myth that coal can ever be clean and that they're solving energy poverty when we know in the communities where they mine in Rocky Branch where Saline County officials just granted Peabody access to a road yesterday, that coal is never clean and that they're not solving energy poverty, they're deepening poverty. Jeff Biggers and Caroline Burney, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. You can follow us at The Real News on Twitter. Tweet me questions and comments at Jessel Noor. Go to therealnews.com for all of our coverage against the fight back against environmental devastation. Thank you so much for joining us.